So today I want to share with you um, VirtualBox script a batch file using VirtualBox Manage to bring up my VOS routers and stop them. So I've got two scripts. One says start VOS and Linux server, and the other one says stop VOS on the Linux server. So when I double, it's a batch file. So when I double click it, it will you know, bring up my four VOS, five VOS routers and a Linux server. And then it will automatically go and do a putty session into them. So all of these sessions that are coming up are getting a headless start in VirtualBox with the command VBox Manage. So you're going to have to download the VBox Manage and then give a start VM and the name of the virtual uh, VM and type do a headless so that the virtual box console doesn't come up. Right now, I'm not running virtual box. It's going in the background. Once all the virtual machines in virtual box comes up, you know, four, five VS routers in a Linux server, I'm giving them like around 80 seconds or more to boot up and after they are booting up, have booted up and settled down, I will run after this script, basically a, a putty session that will console into it. So as soon as this timer is, and you can give less time or more time based on how much load you have or how many virtual machines you're starting or how powerful your CPU is, I'm just giving uh, 80, 80 seconds or so. So now we're left with five seconds. And after this, you should see the console pop up automatically. There's the uh, putty sessions that are popping up. The script, this is my Linux server. It's going into the Linux server with a root username. Looks like it's not up yet. And therefore this may fail because the, I'm not, I have not given enough time. So it depends on, oh, it did come up, so. So my Linux server is up. Now I'm waiting on my putty, uh, on my putty sessions into the VS routers. And you can see that these guys are coming up as they're getting booted up. A little bit slow based on your CPU load, obviously. This one came up already. So these are the putty sessions with headless start for reverse of box. And if you want to now you know, configure and test and what, what have you, and you're done with your testing and everything, the second script here is going to stop. And then, I, you know, so I'm going to run this script to turn my virtual machines off instead of going manually. So now they're turning off. And all of those sessions are gone. Let me share with you how the scripts looks like. So this one is start BIOS. You have to specify, make sure you download the virtual box manage. And this is the actual batch file. Make sure you specify the system folders and all that stuff where your virtual box is installed. Let's see if I can just call this. It's a complete path that you will copy from your system uh, setting. C virtual uh, program files, Oracle, virtual box. This needs to be there. And the uh, if you go to the DOS prompt and, you know, and type path, it would give you this path right here and you just copy and paste that. So this path is what you're gonna specify as one line. Make sure you don't put any wraps, line wrappers or you know line feeds. And then you basically use VBox Manage Start VS1. This name is going to be the actual name of the VirtualBox machine. So if I bring up my VirtualBox, 
you would see that this name has to pop up or match up exactly as it is. Vios1, Vios1. If you don't correctly type the exact name, the script's not going to work. And so then you basically say it's a type headless so that the console doesn't pop up. Uh, and then once you type all of that stuff, you give it a time timer like wait 80 seconds, 60 seconds, two minutes, three minutes, whatever you think it'll take these virtual machines to come up. And then the next line basically is saying use putty and load VOS1. So now you can see the name is different here because um, the name in putty is different than the name in VirtualBox. So in putty, I have this name right here and I'm using the pipe mechanism to go into the VOS so that you don't have to configure uh, IP address and management interface to SSH into it. I'm just basically using this pipe mechanism. Uh, and it's this name's got a match up with this one. Uh, this name's got a match up with the virtual box name, sorry. So that now I'll show you this guy right here. And the setting for the serial port. There it is. So your serial port for VOS1 is backslash backslash dot backslash pipe backslash VOS dash one, which is the actual name in VirtualBox. And that's the name that you are, that's the session that you want in VOS, in, in PuTTY. The name in PuTTY is VOS one without a dash, but you're going into this pipe on the host. So this name here in PuTTY, you've got to match the VirtualBox name, okay? So it has to be a serial 9600. You save that session and it will come up. Make sure the virtual box serial port matches up, the name matches up here, copy and paste. So that's how you would bring up or write a script to bring up putty sessions once you start the headless virtual machines. And I'm just doing putty load BIOS 1, BIOS 2 with this pipe here so that you don't have to go uh, line by line. It doesn't work. Uh, you have to specify the pipe in one line for all the virtual machines. And then you basically are done with the script. Now let's share the stop. The stop one is similar. And I'm sharing, putting the path so that it knows where to go to run these programs, virtual box. Control VM, VS1 power off. You just power off all of these. And then what I'm doing, I'm using a <clears throat> Windows command line option called task kill with, so that I'm basically getting rid of virtual box in the memory. I'm killing the virtual box process altogether. So I'm killing the virtual box after I power down everything. And I was also killing the putty sessions in using the task kill option in. This is a this is a Windows option. This is a Windows command. So you got to specify this path uh, to make sure that everything here works. Test it out. It's fun. It's quick. Instead of going to virtual box and starting each single one of them and stopping each single one of them, especially when you're doing new setups, the pipe option really works well because you don't have to worry about you know, going into uh, individual interfaces for management and SSH. The pipe option, option is really like a console port. So that helps. I thought I'd share with you. Hope uh, it uh, is helpful for you. Thank you.